Good rising, good rising all, good dawning. I trust that you all have, of course, again, rested well and that um, you've had some good travel last night during your time of uh, sojourning and pilgrimage through the astral planes, which many of us just um, refer to as dreaming. <clears throat> this is, of course, um, I mean, we've gotten some good suggestions so far on the name of this. <laughs> The segment I like I like from the Hunter Dome too that was given but uh, we got some good ones from the Hunter Dome flip mode you know lessons from the shrine so we're still maybe we'll, we'll do a poll we'll keep going we'll keep keep it keep them coming we'll keep going through them but thank you all for uh, definitely for participating in that so um, I wanted to share something in regards to something I spoke about recently <coughs> excuse me in terms of um, darkness and more specifically I wanted to speak about the the danger of non-thinking okay a lot of times uh, especially in, in these traditions that some of us find ourselves engaged in and, and in love with you know uh, there's a lot of things that I see that people do and they do them because they were told to, or, you know, like you've heard me say even before, when in doubt, when you don't know what to do, just copy your teacher until you find your own group. But some people, they make a static religion off of emulation. And honestly, that comes when they're, or that begins when they're much younger. And they go through experiences where their parents lock down their ability for independent and creative thought you know they're told like sit down shut up which is like hyper violent you should never say that to a child just as a side note you should never tell a child to sit down and shut up you know like even if they need to shut up <laughs> even if they need sit down is some is one thing but you should never tell a, sh a child to shut up um because then later in life when you find that they're unable to think for themselves when you finally ready to release them into the wilds of society, then you get upset. Because when they were trying to express themselves creatively, you weren't able to respect that. So, I say that to say, you know, when it comes to thinking, when it comes to independent thought even, one of the things about darkness is darkness lives in a space where there is no processing of thought matter. Your brain is not necessarily where thought occurs, but your brain is where thoughts are organized. You know, your thoughts occur through your mind. And that's, a, that's in, a, in an untouchable, uncontainable space. And your, your planetary counterpart to the celestial mind is the brain. So it is inside the brain that you get to organize your thoughts, make sense of them, and then eventually produce something with them, you know, create something of value with all those thoughts and um, that creation of value typically doesn't even occur to like after your 40s when you're finally able to actually take all those thoughts that you've accumulated over the years because up up you know up until you're until you're about 40 years old you're pretty much just information gathering just collecting information trying to figure out you know where to place everything you're becoming knowledgeable in many different things, but you, you haven't really developed the proper application of such knowledge, which is wisdom. That comes later, you know, and that's cool. That's, that's a part of the process. But um, <clears throat> when you have a culture of emulation, and I see this so much in the Orisha community and the Ifa community, which is a very dangerous thing, that culture of emulation is no culture of thought. And those who tend to be the most dead set on emulating, are typically um, the ones that lack the majority of facility of, um, of critical thinking. You see, so what happens is when now you introduce information that could evolve their perspective, they become very defensive to it. No, that's not how I was shown. I was shown like this. My godfather said this, my godmother said that. I never heard of that before. That's a, that's a very famous one that I hear all the time. When I teach something, they say, well, I never heard that. Well, 
why would you go to a class to hear something you've already heard? Isn't the whole point to hear something new? <laughs> but that's that culture of emulation because they've been conditioned into it when they were very young and were told to sit down, shut up, you, you know, um, they saw their parents do certain things and it was cute, sometimes it's cute to watch our parents, I mean, I'm excuse me, to watch our children or encourage our children even to do what we do. You know, we're reading a book, they're reading a book. We're working on a car, they're working on a car. You know, we're tying our shoes, they're tying the shoes. And it's cute. <clears throat> but when they come to the age of reason and you want them to start reasoning, sometimes it gets very difficult or even frustrating as a parent because there's no independent thought. And sometimes accountability is rough for people. So they, it's hard for them to take accountability and say, hey, hey, maybe I did this. Maybe I, maybe I help to shut down that faculty in my child that I'm so frustrated about now not seeing. So inside that dark space where there is no processing of light, that's where your obstacles creep in, your ajogan. Uh, for some of you, you may call that your demons, right? Um, or just your contrary forces, your opposing forces. They live in that space. They live in that space of, of habit. You know, like we speak about, I did a show one time on habits. On, I think it's on the Chief Yu Ya channel, but it's definitely on Blog Talk Radio. And I spoke about, you know, habits come from, the term comes from habdashery. Your habdashery is your clothes. Um, what nuns used to wear, or what they still wear, is called habit. The habits, the, the nuns uniform is a habit. So your habits are what you dress yourself in every day. It's what you clothe yourself in, what you cover yourself in. And they can actually, just like your clothing blocks you from the elements, your habits can block you from new information. They can block you from evolving information, from evolving life. Just like this shirt I have on right now is blocking me from, I mean, I'm sitting in the shade, obviously, as you can see, but they would, it would be blocking me from the sunlight if I was sitting in direct sunlight, right? So I may, you know, I may get soaked by light, soaked by information everywhere else, but where my habits are covering me, you see? Now I'm gonna give you a moment to let that soak in when you think about wearing more or less clothing and sometimes the value of it. I'm not talking about walking around naked. That's a, that's a silly, stupid, I'm just gonna say it, stupid uh, debate that I've never gotten into. Well, back in, the, back in such and such, we walked around naked. No, we didn't. Stop that, stop that. Stop trying to find different excuses to fuel and advocate your thought of it. If won't be a thought, just be a thought. It's okay now. Anybody, you be anything you want to be now, man. Things are things are different. You could you could tell, have your teenage son, you know, mutilate his genitals and change his gender. It's it's every, it's a it's wide open now. So you don't have to do all of these justifications where you're actually blaspheming now against um, time honored cultures. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Like I was saying, and that space of emulation and that space of habit you know, habitual behaviors, there's a lack of processing of thought. Where there is a lack of, of thought processing, there is space and room for your demons, obstacles, ajogan, your, your devils, whatever, whatever it is that you want to use. Devils is probably not the best one, but you know, whatever, whatever works for you that wakes you up <laughs> to the idea, that's where they operate. So how you get out of that is you constantly and fill yourself with the processing of light. Don't allow yourself to be, you know, we have like the sacred Odu, uh, Irosu Meiji, or even Owon Meiji, which deals with ego and, and destiny. And times when people allow themselves to be driven into their destiny as opposed to driving their destiny. And the ones who are always driven into their situations without critical thinking, Honestly, those are the most dangerous people to be around. If you think about a, a soldier, right? A soldier's whole thing is to follow orders without question. And the idea of following an order without question can make someone a very dangerous person. And we may honor it because of that level of obedience. We may even think there's something um, even admirable or even sacred about it. But the truth is, emulation is for 
a time. Yeah. It's um, for a time. And then there comes a time when your reasoning and your critical thinking has to take over, right? And if it doesn't take over and you're constantly operating in that dark space, like darkness tends to do, it will creep in to the light space, okay? It will creep into the into the light place space and seek to envelop it if you allow the repetition of habit to always be what your life is. Now there are some good habits, don't get me wrong, but even your good habits have to be fueled and propelled by your critical thought. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm giving you a very sacred because <laughs> I'm pulling this right from Odu's in terms of the reasoning. I'm giving you a very sacred teaching, but I'm giving it to you in a very, very simple way, okay? Um, and the very simple lesson here is don't allow yourself to be driven into modes of habitual and repetitive act action and pre-programmed thoughts. You decide what you want your habits to be, no different than you should decide what you want your clothes to be. You dictate and determine what your fashion should be. There's an alarm going by. Let me let this ambulance pass. Alright, I didn't want to be shouting over the ambulance. But yeah, you have to define and determine what you want your clothing, your habdashery, your habits to be. But you define and determine that based off the critical statement that you choose to make in your life, not based off of anything else. And if you can do that, then you propel yourself into a very powerful space within this spiritual way. Because now you become part of the critical thinkers and the critical thinkers contact and interact with divine energies at a much, much, much more profound um, frequency than those who are just doing dances and songs and things like that because that's what they were. They were they were just taught to do, but they never took the time to say, okay, I'm gonna keep doing this, I enjoy it, or I respect it, but why exactly am I doing it, and what does it actually mean? Those who go past that veil, and it's like a veil, but those who are willing to go beyond that veil are the ones who now step into the higher layers and the higher echelons of this wisdom, all right? So that is your thought to consider, to think about for the day from the shrine and you know the world is the shrine so sometimes I'm inside of my um, physical shrine sometimes I'm inside of my metaphorical shrine but either way they're all coming from the processor of the mind all right so you guys travel well today travel safe bundle up <laughs> uh, you know make sure you're warm and, and just make sure you're safe and Pay attention to the habits that you engage in today. And if they're coming from a place of critical thinking or if they're coming from a place of, you know, emulation. And that's from everything, from even how you greet people, from how you leave people, to what you eat, to what you're wearing. You know, think if, if, if those things are being um, manifested from the dark space or if they're being manifested from the light processing of your own critical thinking. All right? I'll see you all tomorrow. Chief Yuya signing out, theorisha.com. The Orisha Center is the social media handle. Ask Osiris for readings, because you guys have been asking. People have been wanting me again to call them because they want to talk to me about getting a consultation. So um, you just have to go to askosiris.com. All right? Until such time, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace.